John. So we've got the reasons why God wanted him to go to Nineveh, and we got reasons why John didn't want to go to Nineveh. Not that it's gonna matter to God, because he's gonna go to Nineveh, he just don't realize it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants help. So let's go get let's get back on the boat with Jonah. John. He's on the boat now. He can pay his fare. Now he's on the boat. Instead of going to Nineveh, he's heading to Tarsus. Mm. So let's just follow along behind him, and you put yourself in Jonah's shoes and whatever you're doing wrong, and see how God may be dealing with you today, and we can learn from Jonah's mistake. You ever got big brothers and big sisters? And you see when they did wrong, how they got tore up. Mm. <laughs> and then would you come up and get to that stage and do the same thing they no. did? No. 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 And we let's start off with verse 3. Now remember, he's, he's on the way to the Tarsus. Verse 3. No, verse 4. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. And such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they grew, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. So in our disobedience, it's a blessing when, a, when God follows us and chastises us to get us to do right. Because if he just let John go and let us all go and do what we want until judgment they get here, then he know what to say to So when he, if he wanted to end your life, he, he just do it now. But he followed Jonah to sea and caused a wind, a storm out there. Yeah. And he said that, that the boat that he was on, they're going to learn a lesson yeah. as well. Yeah. Now, God wasn't after the sailors, but they throwing the cargo over at the boat to call it, to call it safe and sail from the storm. But they don't know God wasn't trying to get to them. Uh -huh. So, so the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship fled to break up. All the sailors were afraid that each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to light the ship. And guess where Jonah was? Mm -hmm. Jonah had gone below the deck, where he lay down and fell into a sleep. <laughs> sleep. How many people you know that cause the trouble, especially in our homes sometimes? <coughs> you up all night trying to figure out how to make this marriage work. And the one that's causing all the trouble. You sit up all night, worry yourself, how I'm going, how can I make this relationship work? And the one that's causing the trouble. Snore. 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 In our neighborhood, you yeah. tell them how to how to be a good neighbor. And you got a guy down the street working on an old car, and he just making all the noise, smoking up the neighborhood. Amen. You know, doing all kinds of stuff, just cause trouble. Amen. But Jonah was at the bottom of the ship sleeping while these guys were up on the deck, throwing cargo overboard, trying to trying to light the ship in the storm. So the captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your guard. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and a lot fell on John. Mm -hmm. So they asked him, Tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Yeah. Now, I've learned uh, that you got to be careful who you help. Amen. Because you can be helping a fugitive on the run. Mm -hmm. You can be in the, and they're caught and you caught helping them. You can be an accessory to a, to a crime. Mm -hmm. Helping a murderer, a fugitive on the run. Mm -hmm. And right about now, we can say Jonah, Jonah. 
is a fugitive on the road. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Running from the Lord. Yeah. And because the sailors are so close to him, they're afraid as well, even though God is not after them. So we can learn from this that you gotta ask questions when somebody comes to you need help. I've, I've experienced before that uh, God came to me one time he needed some money. And so I, I, I've already learned uh, so what do you need because I gotta give you things now. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to help you do wrong, but I'm not sure helping you do the right thing. Amen. Amen. He said, uh, I need five dollars. I'm ready to take him to one of the best restaurants in Los Angeles. I'm going to take time to stop. I'm going to go feed this man. I got a chance to do a good deed in the sight of the Lord. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to feed this man. He wanted to call out. He said, What do you need? He said, Get this old girl, and I just need five more dollars. Take her to the rural hotel. Touch you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. This side of life. 
because of another song I like to make his two hands. He's going to make it like the rich man did. Mm -hmm. Wait until they leave this soul in hell. And they want to try to try to save his brothers he left behind. It's too late. Okay? It's too late. So we do all we can now to help our little ones, and then now when it's time to get out of God's way. So Jonah told in verse 12, they asked him, what should we do with you? But it's, but it's sea to calm down. He said, pick me up and throw me into the sea. He replied. And they will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. So again, you should know when you are out of God's heart by his word. Same way you should know when you're in his will, in his order, you should know by that same word when you're out of his heart. Okay. And when things start happening to you, you start, don't cry and say, why me? Why not? Mm -hmm. Because you put yourself in this position for things to go wrong in your life. Grandfather obviously is a child, he has a little one. You want something good to happen to you. You put yourself in a position where it can not happen. Now, if you want something bad to happen, then do just that. Put yourself in a position where something bad can happen to you. What's the worst thing you can do to put something Put yourself in a position where something bad could happen if we disobedient to God, like Jonah did. Instead of him going to talk to Nineveh, he decided to go to Tosh and put himself in a bad situation. Look what's happening to him now. So fishermen is coming to realize by asking questions about who they're trying to they, they, they don't really know what they're doing. They're not really and subconsciously, they don't realize that, that they are helping John. They're trying to help themselves. They're afraid for their own lives, like the scripture says, not realizing at this point that they're in God's way. Mm -hmm. and, and in the process, they'll, they'll, they'll say that they'll, 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 they'll help sheltering Jonah as well. So you gotta know what you're doing. You know when you're trying to do this, you have to understand what you're doing. Then they cried out to, to, to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die by taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable by killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you please. But not even being a good message. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew, grew calm. Just like that. <laughs> when they realized they were in God's way, Realize after all they were doing, throwing cargo. They were, God don't want your cargo. He wants Jonah. Throw Jonah overboard. Not your cargo. The cargo have not done me anything. Jonah's the one I'm after. Yeah, yeah. So be careful what you what you're doing. Make sure it's something that that you understand. And when God is when God is after, He's after us first. And anybody you are trying to protect, make sure you're not running from God as well. And you're running to God. So in verse 17, now the Lord provided a huge fish to, to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now he's in time out. Put them in time out, send them to the room where they got computers and TVs and, no. and all kind of video games. And you don't realize you send them where they want to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that to my daughter, you know. I wonder why she never come out of the room when she was little. I sent her to her room when she was bad. Got a TV in there, video, cell phone, computers. And they were so mad with her. And he took away from our, uh, our chores that night. He didn't have to wash dishes or nothing. And brother even brought the food to her. He didn't want to see it. Brought the food to her. He didn't want to see it. He didn't want to see it. He didn't want to see it. She wasn't in time. She wasn't, being she wasn't being treated like a queen. And so what I was doing, you got to be careful what you're doing. Yeah. This girl was big trouble for dad to put her in time off. No, no, she's doing all this extra. I had to learn to go to sit down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Punish the kids by sending them to their room. I didn't have to wash dishes. 
clean up and do nothing. You have no responsibility. He gets mad at him. You don't want to see him for a while. Because he just hurts your little feelings as a dad or mom. <laughs> Man, they're laughing and just giving it up. So you young brothers and fathers, don't send your kids to the room. You don't sit them there, take the computers out, unplug them. That don't make them pay for what they did wrong to you. Teach them. Teach them that. You don't do this respect what you're rewarded for. Jonah was put in a place where he wasn't going to find no enjoyment. Yeah. In a whale's belly. Now, the Lord had this fish for him. Yeah. Okay? We, we learned, we're going to learn in chapter 2, same thing we should all observe, but we're going through what God put us in time out. And, and, and time out may not be funny. It, it wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't funny to Jonah being in the, in the belly of a whale three days and three nights. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. But look what he did in, 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 in chapter 2. Chapter 2 was all about him. Now he's being humble. He's being humble. He tried to run, first of all, but he couldn't hide. Now he's being humble. In Jonah chapter 2, it, it talks about from inside the, the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, yeah. his God. Now he wants to pray. Yeah. <laughs> Before, he was running. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when the Lord caught up to him and put him in time out, now he wants to pray. Because now trouble has come upon him. He's scared. You know, he's scared now. He's in this fish's belly and all kinds. You're going to see all kinds of stuff going on. <coughs> So this well, you know, they, 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 they inhale a lot of water. And they can, and all that, all that water coming in on them. And then they, they can go to the lowest depths of the sea, whales. I mean, they, 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 are, they are a special type of fish. You know, the Lord can't this fish in He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realms of the dead, I called for help. I called for help now. He didn't need no help on his way to toss you, but now you need help. <coughs> and you listen to my cry. You cry now. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of